So this here is a piece of poplar. It's a burl off the big old tree where I chainsaw carve. The tree's getting cut down, so I got some of the burl wood. This is, there's lots of bark on it. You guys can see there's still even moss in there. What I've been doing with this for the last, I think, four days is putting it in the oven for five minutes at, I think, 350 Fahrenheit. That's Canadian temperature. For five minutes, I turn it off. I open the door, let the heat get out a bit. Then I let it sit in there. You can dry wood out in your oven, but please, on my suggestion, do not catch your house on fire. So you can see the burl in here. There's barely any hardwood on this. So most of this, all that white wood is uh, the sapwood, AKA water wood. There's a little bit of hardwood right here in the center of the screen and right there where it's a little bit darker in the center of the screen. So I thought on this video, since I didn't plan to carve today, it's raining out there. It's not a very nice day. Since I got this piece, we'll, uh, I'll make something, something out of nothing, you know, like, um, so you'll see this burl, there's a hot, the, well, this, we'll call it the wood, there's high points and low points, so you see the bark goes a lot deeper here, then comes back out here again, so, who knows, um, who knows, what I'm going to try and do is carve a wood spirit in here today, if it turns out, if it does, it doesn't, oh well, at least you've uh, learned, I've never really carved too much poplar before with my Dremel, this is a Dremel carving, and um, let's get this uh, laid out and draw the wood spirit on. So what I, what I was told on the uh, bird's eye burl, what it is, is that actually the tree's trying to grow out little branches. So you can see there, that's a little knot there, right? So there's all, all these little dots. There's the tree trying to grow out the little branches. So you're going to, I think with this bird's eye, I think you're going to get soft spots. You can see here, it's all cracked and stuff. No big deal. We're going to carve through it. Like I said, we're going to make something out of nothing. So now you got to think, where do you want to put the forehead? If you even want to give it a forehead, where do you want to? Well, just where do you, where do you want it? What do you want to do? Um, there's not much hardwood here. You can see it's high here. And the bark goes really deep in there. Then it's a little bit high here. You can see, it, see even see here it narrows out. Uh, even if this doesn't work out, I'm going to upload the video. I think this is a good place for its head right here. Um, let's see. Center line is always good to have. And uh, little eyes here. And then his nose here. Try and get his nose on the hardwood. Well, sapwood, but we'll just call it the hardwood compared to the bark. So there's that. I think it's pretty uneven, but this is not going to be a highly detailed wood spirit. Probably won't have real eyes. And what we're going to do is we're going to start. I don't know how fuzzy this poplar wood's going to be because it might not even be 100% dry yet. Um. Here's the Cutsole Extreme Flame Burr. Anybody wants to get these burrs, go to the description below. It'll take you to the Cutsole site. Use the code CFUSION to save yourself 5%. Now, I don't think that 5% works for um, the packages. When you buy, like, the packages of three burrs, the combo kits, I think it just works for single burrs. So, uh, Cutsole shipping's not cheap, so I suggest, and I'm not trying to be a salesman here, but if you're going to buy a burr from Cutsole Direct site, uh, buy more than one to save yourself money on shipping. So let's do the, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to cut around, we're going to cut around here. What we'll do on this video is we'll slope it, see the tip of the nose here? We're going to cut all this and slope it back first to make our uh, nose elevated off. That's the, so the forehead's up here, bottom of the nose is here. We're going to cut all this way inside there, try and get that nose to pop off. We don't have a lot of depth here, but we got enough. You can see here the bark was starting to separate from the wood. Anyways, it's just about uh, having a good time and trying something that you've never tried before. Okay, so I'm running a Dremel 4000 with a Dremel flex shaft. I already showed you guys the burr. Uh, my Dremel's hooked up to a foot pedal for on and off, so I don't have to keep on going over there and switching off the Dremel. I do suggest get yourself a foot pedal, just a cheap on-off one. 
um, off Amazon will work good, or even a sewing machine pedal. And um, all the dust is going to get sucked down here. Well, some of it, because they curve so fast and crazy. Okay, let's turn the fan on. So you can see there how, how much easier it carves through the bark than the hardwood. So Yeah, this is going to be a real tricky piece to carve. See how it's all inconsistent there? So you get like um, soft spots and hard spots. But we're going to try and make the best. Uh, we're going to try and make the best out of this so we can make the best out of this. Ha <laughs> ha. So that's what we got done so far. Um, this wood, even though I put it in the oven for like five nights for five minutes at a time, um, it's still wet. I can feel it wet. And a good indicator that your wood's wet is um, your burrs will plug up like this. All right. You can just get a torch and burn that off or you can let them sit in WD-40 overnight to get that uh, stuff in there. You could use a, a copper brush too. So you can see here, this is going to be a tricky one because here's the eyes. We're going to have to push the eyes up higher because right where this white wood is compared to this bark, this bark just drops off like a cliff. See that? So I know that I got to, well, let's see here, the nose. This has to be the end of the nose, the, tip, the bottom tip of the nose because this bark just, like I said, if I carved this bark away, it would just be like a cliff in there. So let's readjust. And carry on, I guess. So let's draw. Actually, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to draw my nose on first. So I don't know if this bark goes underneath that way. I think it will probably, the hardwood would slope up this way. Because it all connects. But you just don't know what these burls. So I think it would be safer actually to push the, the tip tip of the bottom of the nose back a bit away from that edge I should have moved it more over that way too but that's okay don't know how this is going to turn out like I said we're just experimenting so when this wood is popular um, popular wood just carve Rob really likes to carve it some other people like to carve it I didn't mind carving it with the chainsaw, but um, when it's wet, everything's, the wood's harder to carve when it's wet, and it's definitely uh, fuzzier. I don't know if you guys can see the fuzzy on there, but it's not too bad, but I think the deeper that I carve into this hardwood, the um, wetter it's going to get halfway. So now we got to carve, this is not a tutorial how to carve a wood spirit, but I'm going to carve these eyebrows below the eyebrows and then carve around the nose deep right in here. Okay, I have lots of tutorials how to carve wood spirits in my playlist. This is just uh, showing you guys, you guys can carve whatever you want to carve on any type of piece of wood you get. Just kind of like uh, open your mind. I can see here that the bark is probably going to be the mustache. So, all right, so let's cut across those eyes first.
So what I was trying to do there on the edges, don't feel like you have to carve in as fast as heavy as me. What I was trying to do there is push that face back in the um, corners there. So you got like a triangle here because you got a round of face off. So I'm trying to push it deep inside there. So you can see there, I just carved quickly. There's the cliff. See the side there? That's what I was talking about. But I can see if I carve it away here, the mustache, it's just, you got to make do with what you got. So I'll get this mustache carved in, and then uh, we'll carry on. Actually, I'll keep carving live here so you guys can see. So you got the hardwood when you hit the bark, it really digs in. Okay, then you can start seeing the face come out. Okay, on another note for a second, that uh, eagle that I did with that gold leaf stuff, and it was just a silly video, I did it all black, and um, now it's, well, it's black and red, and I put an abloin shell in the eye. Now it's um, a raven. Yeah, so just make your pieces whatever you want to make them. I like it a lot better now. See all the red in there, kind of? Anyways, that's that. Uh, so, when you're doing pieces like this, you just don't know what you're going to cut into. You don't know what's going to happen. So you can see there's still bark down here. I could cut this deeper and get rid of all this bark here, but I just don't know. I don't. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it. The bark is super fuzzy because I was carving it with such an aggressive bit. You know, you just got to keep carving and and try and make it look somewhat. Like a wood spirit. There's still lots more work to do. Um, you can see there, like up in the head, how the bark, where it's darker there, the bark just keeps on going down and down. on, And then on the right side, it's just uh, hardwood. So you just got to do what you got to do. I kind of cleaned this up a bit down here too. I think this bark is still so fuzzy. I got this uh, gold burr on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and clean up the bark with the gold burr a bit. And then I'll pull out um, this emery cloth, scotch brite, sorry, sander. If that doesn't work, I'll pull out uh, this sander on the man mandrels that you get on Amazon. So let's uh, see if this works. This might plug up pretty quick, I, I imagine. So it's already kind of plugged up. But this is the gold one for real fine carving. And if that doesn't work, we'll try this. If this doesn't work, 
We'll try this. Yep. See, it's all plugged up now. It's like smooth. Now I'll try the scotch brite. Don't forget to turn your Dremel down when you're using this. Okay, now I'm going to pull out the sounder to sound this up a bit. The burl, the bird's eye stuff, branch and stuff going deeper inside there. Look how deep they go inside there. So I hold it out. This eye is kind of bothering me. This pupil, I don't know why. You got to sit back. Look at the piece. I can see that this eyebrow is lower than this side. Um, I could try and make it higher, but I don't think I need, I can tell this is, this eyebrow sticks further off the, the piece. Let me pull this off of here. Get some better lighting. See all that side there? Um, I want to try and fix this where my thumb is that pupil maybe I'll try and put a black dot in there or something they're just uh, I don't know sometimes you just got to leave it the way it is you know it is kind of what it is and that's the way it is with this wood this is a very tricky piece of wood to carve I'll say that much right now very tricky okay so this is what I got uh, I had to paint inside the bl that eye black because the the little branches come out. Sometimes when I carve deeper, it looks like there would be an eye looking that way. Another time I carve deeper, it looked like there was an eye looking that way. So I said, screw it, forget it, just paint it black in there. Okay, and that one, I carved a little pupil in there too. So now, even though this is a little bit damp wood, this wood dries out really fast. I got this satin clear. I don't have much, like, there's enough maybe to put one coat on this piece. So I'm going to spray it off, uh, not filming, and then we'll see these colors really parp on the... This is where the bark and the white wood really separate from colors, right? So let's, let's do this. Got so far. Okay, bye. Okay, well, I'm waiting for that to dry. I guess I'll carve a piece of wood spirit on this god-awful piece of bark I found on the beach. grain in there Let's see if we can get some better lighting I got so much of this wood I'm gonna do some wicked wicked carvings once it dries out a bit better I tell you that like something that's gonna take me a long time to do so there it is here's the other one I carved really quickly this is something I'll carve like uh, on a piece of bark that's not very good I just hold out the eyes gave them some eyelids Nothing special. Let's get this out of the way. Actually, what I'm going to do to, to finish off this video is uh, give this guy some Mod Podge. Um, Mod Podge, whatever you friggin' call it. This stuff, I like putting this on wood carvings because it doesn't darken the wood too much. It's not like an oil-based thing, right? It's just like a, giving it a layer of glue, basically protective so i'm going to give this mod podge we'll finish this video off with this one this is dry because i'm going to put this outdoor all winters for all winter and see how long it lasts outdoors we'll talk about that maybe even at the end of next summer to see if this mod podge 
holds up pretty good outdoors. And I think it does because just Carve Rob, uh, mom, his mom used to own a hobby store and she used to put this stuff on like uh, all her garden outdoor gnomes and stuff like that. So I just carved Rob. So there's that. Look at the beautiful colors in that wood. Let's get it off of here. First of all, don't forget to sign your pieces. There's the hole in the back to hang it. It's not my best wood spirit, but look at this. I have to give it another couple coats. So I gotta get another can. That's what you get if you got uh, one coat. But you know, I'll go pick up another can in a couple days, and then the shine, the shine on this, will be consistent. Because some of that wood is more porous and it sucks in the stain, the finish or whatever it is. So if you let this dry out and let this finish dry. Give it a couple coats within a couple days everything will be consistent but look at that beautiful color of that bark i got some big slabs like this where i left the bark on it so i'm probably going to bring one of those home and uh, start letting it dry i'll be more patient though but i think it turned out pretty neat just an old old cranky guy sitting in the wood see his lip what happened there he's got the burl in there i kind of had to let it do what it was going to do now he's kind of got a like a attitude lip. Look at that. Oh boy, I got some really wicked stuff at my tent. Yeah, oh, there's going to be tons of this brill carving coming up. So let's get the Mod Podge on this and uh, finish this video. The hour the Mod Podge is somewhat dry. They say that the Mod Podge does take about 24 hours to dry to get really clear. You know, I just had a hot bath. And I was thinking about this wood in this piece. This one's basically a prototype. So I could try carving the wood, see what the bark's like, see what the burls are like and everything, right? So, but I think when you get some beautiful wood like this, you're best to leave it open, like carve a simple face. Because really, basically, the grain in this wood is the art. You know, like wood turners like to turn this stuff to, to make bowls. Um, I am going to send Chris, the Viking warrior, I'm going to send him some pieces in about a year once it's dry. Because uh, maybe he can stabilize it and that cactus juice and make some pens out of it. I'm going to send Just Cry Rob some so he can make some uh, knife handles out of this stuff. But I think it needs to be stabilized first. But I think the art's in the, the wood itself. So... What I mean, leave it open, is like less details, you know, just something very basic. If you do a basic, just a, you know, like a native face, just the outline of a face, or like a koi fish, or something just with an open grain, flat surface, and let the, the wood be the beauty, if that makes sense to you. Here's another piece that I have, it's almost dry. I had this here, this one's pretty well dry I think but you know I've, I've been looking at this piece and after carving this what I see on this piece because you got the bark up there acting like hair I've been thinking of a happy face like a kind of Asian happy like a fat happy face and I was thinking where do I know that happy wide not, not simple but um, open green happy face and I realized that I was thinking of Larry Dibbs carvings. So Larry Dibbs does like um, big wide, um, his last carving of the, the what was it, the, the Lady of the Leafs with the little bird nest on there. It's a big wide happy face and that's what I was thinking. So that's what I'm gonna do on this one. It, you know, it won't be like Larry's, but it will, you know, I'm, I'm getting the idea I think from Larry from it. I got some Asian masks here that are uh, simple, actually, you know what? Stand by. This is a mask that my grandpa gave me when I was super young. And this is what I'm talking about. You see how it's all open grain? This is from, uh, it's like an Asian. I don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese or Korean. But um, yeah, this is an open, open grain mask. But that's what I'm talking about. So you can see the grain. In there, this is a super old piece. You can see how the finish is all cracking, but um, open grain. That's what this piece is going to be. I got one other piece here I want to show you guys. Then I got this one. So let's flip it over. 
So here's the hardwood, poplar. Here's the hardwood, the darker stuff. Here's the sapwood. But you get some burls in the sapwood too. And you guys can see this piece is basically all sapwood. So this piece here, I already have a plan for it. Let's see if we can give you a wider view here. I already have a plan for it. So this is the burl down here. We don't, we don't have, you can see there's a stick coming out of it. We don't have a lot of hardwood there. So, you know, this poplar is also, I think it might be related to the cottonwood family because this is kind of seems like it's really um, thin cottonwood bark, this bark. But this piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to carve it like this. Let's see if I can get it to sit here. That's my biggest problem with these videos. So I'm going to carve it like this. I'm going to carve a wood spirit up here or just a big happy face up here where it's flat because it's flat up there i'm going to have like a little scene with some mushrooms and you know you can even carve a little owl to sit on this little branch so anyways that's it everybody so these videos will be coming up soon i might be working on this piece i don't know what piece i'm going to work on tomorrow look at all the moss on this piece too i'm going to try and leave it on there if I can't leave the moss on on some of it, then um, I'll glue some more moss on because I saved lots of this moss because I'm tired of buying it. But anyways, that's that. I think I'll be carving the fat, happy face on this piece tomorrow. Carving fusion, over and out.